is Pitbull still part of Trackhouse Racing? Plus, what's going on over at RCR? Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Let's have a conversation real quick about reliable reporting within NASCAR. There's a lot of really good people in NASCAR. Drew Bianchi, Jeff Gluck, Bob Pockris. The list kind of goes on and on. And then there's some less reliable people out there, specifically, essentially sports. Do not do not click on anything that they post. They're an aggregate company out of India. They do not have any actual information. They just take a little bit of tidbit and then they try to make this huge story out of something that just is not there. Throw in Sports Kita as well, another absolutely trash, unreliable source of information. So this past week, there were some news floating around that Pitbull, Check out Pitbull Mr. 305, but it said Mr. Worldwide had sold off his portion of track house and he was no longer part of the company anymore except that's just not true justin marks took to the internet on tuesday night to address what was said and he said every single element of the story is that my friend and partner pitbull leaving track house are materially untrue unreliable media perpetuating a lie we have big plans for 2025 and beyond i couldn't remember the entire thing so i had to look over at it but yes pitbull is still very much part of track house and i think people maybe just got confused about how the ownership side of track house works because Pitbull was is not, it was never a 50 50 split not like a Gene Haas Tony Stewart type of situation it was very much just a like I'm not even sure if it was 70 30 80 20 maybe even 90 10 Justin Mark was always the principal owner in track house so where did all of this actually stem from? Well, on Trackhouse's website, they removed the co-owner title from Justin Marks and instead just put owner on the screen, which he technically is. He is the majority owner over there as well. They did just recently sell a minority stake in Trackhouse Entertainment to the Avenue Sports Fund. Mark Lazary, the former co-owner of the Milwaukee Bucks, his company. But Pitbull is still very much part of Trackhouse. According to Justin Marks, he's just, he's Armando, right? He's Mr. Worldwide, Mr. 305. He's not at the racetrack every single week and he's still going to continue to be part of that going forward. Trackhouse as a company has continued to just absolutely expand their race team, likely going to three cars next year once the charter agreement gets finalized and they can announce that they've acquired a charter from the Stuart Haas racing sale and then who their driver will be, likely Shane Van Gisbergen. Then they can, you know, have this three car team for next year. But by all accounts, Pitbull is still very much part of this team. Just don't listen to websites, especially essentially sports. They're just not good at what they report on. I mean, heck, everybody gets things wrong from time to time, right? Essentially, sports has never gotten anything right, and they constantly just take a small little bit of information, something somebody says in passing, and then turns it into this gigantic story. Tony Stewart said this, and you won't believe it. Shut up. Nobody cares what you're talking about. At least with me, I'm never going to tell you guys any information unless at least two people have told me the same exact thing and I feel comfortable sharing it. Tons of things come into my text, tons of things come into my DMs that just will never make it past right there because, you know, I don't want to be the guy that's showing up and being like, Kevin Harvick to the five is happening and the whole garage area is like, what are you talking about? Nobody is doing that. So don't pay attention to Essentially Sports. Don't pay attention to Sports Kita. No, Justin Marks did not load up the family and leave Pitbull behind like Homer Simpson in the Simpsons movie. He's still very much part of the team, still very much part of the family, and they'll just continue to move on. Was there a restructuring? Probably, possibly. That's more than likely what has happened here, but Pitbull is still part of Track House. Moving on to another topic, which has certainly been interesting over the last few weeks, days, probably even when I just talked about my text message in my inbox, this has been something that's been kind of going back and forth a lot. And that's what's happening over at Richard Childress Racing. So a few weeks ago, Austin Dillon talked to SiriusXM NASCAR, and he said that there were big changes coming to RCR at the end of this year, the beginning of next year, and they're looking to make a big hire. Well, when he said that, the internet thought that that meant Rodney Childers was going to Richard Childers Racing. Obviously, we know that's not true. He went over to Spire Motorsports. He will now lead up that number seven car. Who will that driver be? Uh, you know, people are going to point to Kyle Busch. I think Spire wants to make a big splash here. Everyone will say, you know, he has a contract at RCR next year. Very true, but contracts really don't mean much of anything uh, when you get down to it and money starts flying around. Tyler Reddick also had a contract at RCR for the next season, and he was still able to get it out of that a year early to go over to 2311 Racing. We see it happen all the time. Time, whether or not his contract gets bought out, maybe there's a performance clause, who knows what's going on with that. I think there is a better than 0% chance that Kyle Busch ends up at Spire with Rodney Childers. I know Bob Hawker said that he does not expect Kyle Busch to be there, which is fair. I don't necessarily know if Kyle's 
going there. I don't feel confident enough, you know, to even come close to saying that, but I think there's a better than 0% chance. So what else is going on over at RCR? Who's this big hire they're going to make? What are these big changes that are going to be happening as well? Well, I've had a few things come in to the inbox, to, into the text messages, and it appears that there might be something going on potentially with Richard Childress Racing and Pollock Racing. They already have a technical alliance as it stands right now. It sounds like that could become a stronger alliance at that. Whether or not that means a merger, uh, I don't feel comfortable going there yet. I don't think that's going to happen. I think Richard Childress is too proud of a man to merge into a Colleg, you know, Childress or Childress Colleg type of racing situation. Uh, I don't think that's going to happen. I think RCR wants to continue to try to rebuild and get back to where they think they belong at. Um, at the front, granted, it's been 30 plus years. Richard Childress Racing is very much like the Dallas Cowboys of NASCAR at this point. They did a lot of things years ago. Well, I don't even know if the Cowboys can because uh, they're winning at times. They're like the Washington Commanders or the Cincinnati Reds. They're just basically used as an insult from Gen Zers now. It's, you used to do something. You did something great a long time ago, 30 plus years ago, but you haven't done anything for us lately. Why are you continue to tell us about how great used to be you can only live off of history for so long before people just turn to you as an afterthought or start using you as an insult and unfortunately richard Charles racing has kind of reached that point right they have not won a nascar cup series championship in literally 30 years 1994 was the last time they won one with dale earnhardt kevin harvick flirted with one every now and then but was never going to get there because they just never had the performance to get him to that point and then he leaves and wins it of course right away with stuart haas racing but for Richard Childers Racing, obviously something's going to have to happen over there. And I do think that there's going to be a stronger alliance. Will it be a 2311 Racing, um, Joe Gibbs Racing type of situation where uh, the two of them are basically the same team, separate, but essentially the same, have the same comp meetings, everything like that. College Racing is already on campus in Welcome, North Carolina. That would certainly help solve a bit of the lock that you know, RCR currently has at the Cup Series level. I think they would like to move Austin Hill up. I think Austin Hill would like to move up. He did sign a multi-year Xfinity deal with RCR, but if a Cup opportunity came along, possibly. He was rumored to be going to, uh, not even rumored, he was supposed to go to College Racing this year to drive their Cup Series car and then bailed out on that deal to return to the Xfinity Series with RCR, which again, they're on the same campus and welcome. They're literally, RCR shops here, College shop is right here. You can walk between the two of them could not have been, you know, uh, it had to be an awkward experience. But having that charter would certainly help put them up there and have Austin Hill be able to essentially just run an RCR car at the Cup Series level. Obviously, the two of those teams have absolutely struggled. If they brought the resources together in a stronger manner, maybe. Or could it be a financial situation where the two of them have a stronger alliance, there's a stronger exchange of money? Do they help each other land sponsorship? Do they help each other land investments that go along with it? It does feel like there's something that's going to happen between those two companies. And honestly, RCR right now needs a stronger technical partnership they need to have a guy like matt Cog has got to be next to his net worth that's huge for them is he going to put more of his money into it that eh, remains to be seen right now but but i do think that obviously things aren't going well over at rcr things aren't going well at cog combining those two resources together could help try to turn the ship around rcr of course is struggling right now with everything same with cog they're basically struggling for the same thing they don't have speed they don't you know they lack mechanical grip um getting you know through the corners so maybe that's something that we see happen here going forward. But I do think the big change is going to involve personnel, alliance, as well as maybe even funding at this point. Obviously, every team right now is scouring to find investors. And I, RCR is not exempt from that. Matt Cog's team over at Cog Racing is not exempt from that either. Everybody would be wanting to bring on a fund, just like we talked about with Trackhouse earlier, where they brought, uh, brought on Avenue Sports Fund, the same way that Joe Gibbs Racing brought on the Harris Sports Group last year. A lot of teams would be willing to bring in a fund just like that, not only for the resources, but also for the influx of cash. So things are going to change over at RCR. Still trying to figure out what those changes are going to be you know, finalized. And who are these personnel that they're going to be hiring? Obviously, there's a lot of good people over at Stuart Haas Racing that are going to be open for, you know, employment here come November. Do they land a Scott Zipidelli? I don't know if that's the guy that's going to answer the competition problems over at RCR, but, you know, could be in play there as well. Or maybe they're going to make a big hire from somewhere else. They're not making the same moves that Spire is. Spire is making big time moves, hiring people that have won championships, hiring people um, that, you know, 
hiring people that are willing to take a big increase in pay, which is great for them. Heck, money is coming into the sport right now, and that's certainly not a bad thing. But let me know in the comments what you think about the track house situation, as well as what you think might happen over at RCR. I'll continue to work on the sources around and try to figure out what exactly is going on up in Welcome, North Carolina, so I can have a more concrete uh, bit of information as we head forward into the season. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.